by Tamara Pierce. I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And that's the intro. This is how we begin. This is how we begin. <laughs> um, if you guys want to learn more, like, get Tammy to write more books, that sounds like I'm being like, get her to write, no, help her write more yeah, books. You can, we're not... you can support her on patreon.com slash Tamara Pierce, so you can help her, support her writing books and her feral cat colony. I just feel like when we say, I just, I need, I need to make sure everybody knows we are, we are not saying we need to make her write. We're no. saying. We want to help her be able her to the do what she likes to, be able to do. To, yeah. <laughs> Poof. Yes. So what book did we read this month-ish? It, it, month and a half. Month and a half. I mean, to be fair, I read it. I know, I read it in just ago, a couple but... <laughs> days, but... <laughs> um, that said, we read book three of the Circle of Magic books, Daja's book. Oh, Daja's book. Oh. How did we like Daja's book? Oh my god, I love it so much. I, yeah, it's it's <laughs> so good. I love Daja. I have so many things to say, and pretty much all of them are good. I honestly can't think of any bad things about this Not book. Not a damn thing. Okay, I have some things to bring up later, but that's well, it. Well, but yeah. Okay. Do we want to just hop right in to no, the let's just, synopsis? Let's just hop on in. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, chapter one. Our magical babies, Sandry, Triss, Daja, and Briar, are not in Winding Circle when we find them. They are their. They and their mentors, Lark, Nico, Frostpine, and Rosethorn, are accompanying Sandry's uncle, Duke Vedris, to Golden Ridge, an area of Emelyn which is plagued with grass fires for half the year, and has been in a drought for a long time. California, am I right? Um, <laughs> while visiting, the children are still expected to work on their skills, so Daja Kasubo is kind of uncomfortable w working in, I'm sorry, these are ones that Ariana wrote in the past, so they may not reflect the um, intonation of yeah, current the intonation Ariana. of current Ariana. Thank you. Yeah, valid. <laughs> um, so anyway, they got to work on their skills. So Daja is uh, having a little trouble being in a forge that's not their own. But regardless, she is tasked by Frostpine to make nails. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> she has Trissa to man the forge, because she can just control the air, which, anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, a huge part of this book is the adults being like, oh my god, children, why are you using magic for everything? <laughs> like, well, maybe you should have told us not to. Right? Mm, I'm pretty sure we need guidance. <laughs> we are literal children. <laughs> Daja is bored because, you know, nails are really easy to make. That's why, you know, they're the rep. Um, so uh, she decides to start plucking at the flames, uh, like their fibers, you know, something that Sandry might do. And she, you know, weaves them and and makes this just little cloth that, you know, is is kind of more like a net than a, than a blanket. But she calls it a cloth and, 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 and she just sets it down and uh then she goes on and <laughs> yeah she's just like yeah okay she's, she's like, like the fire hmm. wanted me to do this it's very pretty i'm gonna let it burn brightly there and i'll continue with my work which yeah okay uh I, I, they just accept these things about themselves and it's just like, i mean okay <laughs> you know at 11 i also would have right? just accepted anything like that that's true and like yeah it's just how it is yeah um, as Daja is working, a trader woman, Polyam, uh, how are we going to say this? Is it po Polyam? Yeah. Polyam? Polyam. Um. I, I literally, Polyam. That's how Polyama. I said it. <laughs> uh, Polyam comes in. Seeing that Daja is a, has a trunk, she staff, uh, the woman instantly recognizes her as okay. less than he. Let's, let's explain what the staff was. So, trader, capital T, as a reminder for people. Yeah. Not just not just a, a person who trades, but no. trader as in the people. Trader woman. Yes. This is Polyam of was it Tenth Caravan? Iterum. Yes. Iterum. That's right. Um and Daja 
it has been, if if you guys don't remember, she has been declared Changshi, which is bad luck, outcast. So her staff, her trader staff, which everyone has a staff, of course, um, has a blank cap so that every trader who sees her knows that she's Changshi, bad luck. So if they interact with her, her bad luck will rub off onto them. Proceed. Yeah. So anyway, she's got that, that staff there. And... Um... <laughs> Uh, so Polly Ann just won't talk to her. She's like, nope, no, 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 thanks, I'm good. Um, not acknowledging her existence. And so Daja calls to Triss, uh, who is immediately really pissed off at this woman for treating her sister so horribly because Daja is the youngest of them. And <laughs> Triss is like, how dare you? <laughs> because even though she's bigger than the rest of them, they... She's definitely still the baby. Yeah. Um, she's the little one. As far yeah. as they're concerned, she's the yeah. baby. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, Triss offers to be the go-between for Polyam and Daja, but Polyam refuses to purchase anything the Trongshi might have touched. Polyam and Triss talk about why Daja is Trongshi, and, you know, Triss telling her about third ship Kasubo and how it sank and she was the only survivor and, you know... Her own people decided that meant she shouldn't be one of them. Um, Should I lost it? There we go. Polyam <laughs> tells Triss she is Wirok, which is someone who cannot contribute anything to the caravan. She points at the scars which mar her body and the peg leg she has, indicating she's of no use because she's disabled. She does the trading with smiths, merchants, and the like, just spending the caravan's money. Um, you know, dealing with the people that the other people don't have to deal with. Anyway, Daja leaves Triss to deal with the woman, but she is distracted while eavesdropping and accidentally makes an iron vine grow up her arm. Caswell. Uh, she calls for Triss, who immediately opens the connection with Sandra and Briar. At the same time, <laughs> uh, Briar sneaks up on Sandra while she's examining a delicate embroidery. Sandry touches the thread, which seems to contain metal, and the entire thing catches fire. Sandry apologizes and decides to figure out how she did that. We can pretty much assume this is the moment Triss opens up the link, because then we stop hearing their story, and, and then we just go to where they are currently with Triss, and anyway, but... I have to note, uh, Sandry says, uh, when they open it up, that uh, it has leaves. Briar, that's yours. <laughs> She's like, no, mm, I, I, I don't fucks with trees. Um, like, I, 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 I love Sandry so much more this time around. <laughs> <laughs> she, there's so much to her there's, that is. Oh. Sandry contains multitudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, the children combine to stop the accelerated growth of the iron vines. When they return to their conscious bodies, Triss, who grabbed Daja's hand before they had combined, is now being held by the vine. Luckily, it stopped growing, though, so... Tcha. <laughs> Chapter 2. Uh, while Frostpine is trying to separate Daja and Triss, Polyam returns with two more traitors, a Mamander and the caravan leader. After Frostpine releases the girls from the metal plant, Rosethorn notes that it seems like it will keep growing. Uh, this spurs the traders into action. They offer an obscene amount of money for the thing, though they say that they won't be able to offer more since they'll have to cleanse it of the Trongshi's bad luck. Rosethorn and Triss get their righteousness on about the trader customs because they're the <laughs> ones who have never really dealt with the traders. Like, everyone else in the party, you know... Mm -hmm. Sandry used to have a traitor nurse and you know, and uh, Lark used to be an acrobat and would and traveled with a traitor caravan for a while. Briar had like contact with with traitors and stuff when he was a street rat. So mm -hmm. they all know all the traitor <laughs> stuff, but Triss and Rosethorn are like, "Excuse me? <laughs> Bitch, y'all letting this fly?" Nuh uh <laughs> Um <laughs> But uh, I love that Briar tells her via mind speak to make them pay through the nose for it. He's like, Daja, <laughs> just charge him for everything that, you know, that they're worth. Daja says what we've said in the entirety of this series is about, they can't have it two ways, she told herself. Either I don't exist or I do. This entire series is the children having to deal with the duality of everything. Am mm -hmm. I a mage or a child? That kind of thing. And in this case, it's like, am, do I exist? 
and they buy stuff from me or do I not exist? Like, am I Trangshi or am I Luxha? Luxha. Like, they can't have it both ways. They can't mm-hmm. make money off of me if they're not going to, like, acknowledge my existence. Um, <laughs> she then tells them that if they want it, they have to bargain with her or they won't get it at all. Polly Ann <laughs> pretends she doesn't hear it. She's like, if I heard anything like that, I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I love the language of go around. It's yes. so good. <laughs> let me let me see if I can find it. <laughs> we th- blue traders have a saying, she remarked, staring off to Polyam's side. When three parties bargain, no one wins. Tenth Caravan Iteram must bargain with me directly. Me. Talk to Daja Kasubo the Trongshi, or there will be no talk at all. Hmm. That's my Polly baby. Am shrugged. Since I heard nothing, I can transmit no offers which are impossible to meet. She remarked, turning. She hobbled off after the other traders. Like, I fucking love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so good. Um, Rosethorn takes Briar to go see the gold of Gold Ridge. After all this, uh, which ends up being saffron crocuses. Uh, sadly, the crop didn't do well from the drought. So Briar reaches into the plants through his magic to be like, hey, guys, tell me what's going on with you. Um, and then suddenly it literally he says it, light pops behind his eyes and lightning comes out of his fingers and he completely um, zaps the entire terrace's worth of crocuses to ash, leaving little blobs of glass in the sandy soil. He just that's Whoop. like <laughs> how much like money that would cost thankfully rose thorn is like it's okay they weren't going to survive this winter they wouldn't have like you yeah. didn't like take food out of anyone's like mouth or anything but it's so upsetting for him sandry and lark find daja in the baths contemplating her status as strong she lark tells the girls that they need to map their powers since they are spilling over <laughs> too much uh, and she says sandry will be the one to do it Excellent. Chapter 3. <clears throat> Frostpine and Daja look out at the fire that evening and talk. Frostpine tells his people that she won't be able to help the smith because he's going to be working on some things for the trader caravan, and they can't have a trongshi touch their shit. Uh, this means Daja will be making nails for the foreseeable future. Uh, <laughs> Briar and Triss show up, and Briar literally asks Daja, you want to see something dumb I did? Um... He pr- produces a lump of crude glass w- attached to a burnt saffron plant. Daja and Triss are like, what's wrong with you? And and he literally is, says, I didn't do it a purpose. <laughs> uh, s- s- completely unfazed by this, Sandry bustles in and gives each of her friends a spool of white silk thread to put in their pockets. She tells them that they need to have them in their pockets at all times and under their pillow while they sleep, imbuing them with their background radiation of magic um i was thinking more of like their personal essence that works too i guess i feel like when i think emanate which is what they describe it as later power yeah yeah um damn it oh here we go uh that night at dinner she uh she stuck at the noble table meaning sandry in case you guys forgot who i was talking about uh (laughs) With Uncle Duke Vedris and her cousin by marriage, Lady Enola, instead of her friends. Note, Enola was married to Vedris's son, who has since passed. Lady Enola doesn't believe ladies uh, of their station should weave, but Vedris is like, I mean, it's what her magic demands, so... And Lady Enola is like, well then, she should be at Lightsbridge. We only hire university mages. And Nico is like... Wish you wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just love her papa's coming to her rescue. Yeah. Um, <laughs> men will look at Sandra and be like, "Is anyone gonna father this child?" And then they don't wait for an answer, and then suddenly they adopt her. It's fine. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it, just because Miles wasn't in the same universe, and so yeah. he couldn't just. <laughs> yeah. On cue, the court mage Yaren. A uh, fire tamer makes his entrance. I fucking hate this guy. He is snide, arrogant, has complete victim mentality, but also thinks he is so much better than the winding circle mages. He is not. He is a fucking dummy. <laughs> 
that was his like freeze frame entrance so like froze on him and all of those words appeared on the screen if you saw the movie version of this okay um (laughs) the movie version of this that happened inside ariana's head (laughs) yeah uh (laughs) lady anola introduces yarin like he is their savior while he is taking down or talking down to everyone, uh, a young man comes running in to announce his village is on fire. And uh, he, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, it's really dramatic and out of nowhere. And it's like, oh my God. <laughs> um, Yarin uses this as an opportunity to show how uh, mighty he is in front of the Winding Circle mages. He puts on a display and contains the fire from far away, though it clearly takes a lot out of him. Uh, they are dismissed, and Frostpine confesses he couldn't have put the fire uh, put out the fire at that distance. There we go. Uh, Rosethorn excuses herself suddenly and goes back to Yarin. Naturally, the children have to eavesdrop. They sneak up the stairs and hear Rosethorn trying to reason with Yarin. There hasn't been a forest fire in thirty years because Yarin and his father b- before him banned them. Rosethorn reminds him that forest fires are needed for the health of the woods. She points out that there's masked carpeting on the forest floor and it's just a box of kindling waiting to erupt in flames. Yarin is like, yeah, well, if they catch a flame, I'll just put it out. And Rose Thorn is like, oh, will you? She points out that there is a difference between grass fires and forest fires. The difference being between setting a stack of papers on fire and a large box of, of files on fire in, in stacks of other boxes of files. Yeah. Like, things... Things Californians try to impart upon people. Um, Rose Thorne starts uh, telling him to talk to talk to Triss uh, about what it's, it's like to be nearly eaten up by the attempt to control nature. The kids had to use Triss's magic to uh, catch what Rose Thorne and Yarn were saying on the breeze, and I'm wondering if that was Rose Thorne and she she could tell and send some kind of signal to Nico because she's very cryptic about one of my students who is <laughs> anyway um so nico uh catches them and he's super mad and he drags them down the stairs like he literally has tris by the ear because he's like nope you're my pupil so <laughs> um but anyway uh he's really mad at them for using magic and and He's like, what have I told you about carelessly using magic? And they're like, I mean, you haven't. And he tells them not to use magic unless they're being supervised by their teachers and that they may not use them for chores or everyday life. Shouldn't have this been less than the first? Like, you guys suck at structuring for these babies, education. I love you and all, but you got to get better at this part of the job. <laughs> it's like, I understand. They've had a lot to deal with, you know? Yeah. There's the earthquake. And then after the earthquake was the pirates, and then after the pirates, now they're on this whole thing, this whole trip to go with Vedras to see all the northern parts of the kingdom, to see how they're going to get through the winter, and it's a whole thing. And for some reason, the children are to blame. (laughs) Is it my schooling that's the issue? No. No, it's the children who are wrong. (laughs) Chapter four. Exactly. The babies are helping Daja make nails at a portable forge set up in the courtyard when Polyam arrives, covered in bright yellow from head to toe. This is Kunsuenen, which means that she's been protected from Daja's trunkshi look, but she'll still have to cleanse herself in every single stream once the caravan takes to the road. So they've painted her yellow so that she can be protected and Daja's bad luck will not wear off, just rub off on her. Um, so, yeah. Um, <laughs> Polyam is still an asshole, which surprises no one, and causes Triss to ruin Dodge's nails by making the fire blast too hot. Whoa! She, did, she didn't, like, you know, she tries. She's trying so hard to keep everything under control, she cannot help it. Yeah, get temper it. flares. Sandra puts on, uh, puts her noble on, and tells Polyam <laughs> to come back with all of the pleasantries needed for such a big deal. Food, tea, a gift, etc. And then they can talk a deal. <laughs> this is this is honestly such a little Risa moment. It really like, is. It I'm sorry. really is. <laughs> um, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me, but this isn't how you're supposed to do it. <laughs> um, at that moment, Daja thought she would cheerfully die for any of her three friends who had defended her without being asked. Honestly, though, 
<laughs> Love it. Um, My babies. Rose Thorne tasks Briar and Triss with making burn salve because she knows they'll need it. Page 59. Erda's womb, cried the boy. How much do you want? Enough to drown in? Rose Thorne's eyes were sharp as they met his. You heard what was said last night, I'm told. Briar grinned sheepishly. Then you know what I expect, she continued, her mouth quivering with amusement. Look at it this way. Maybe if you go through all the trouble of making salve, there won't be a fire. Now get to work. <laughs> with a half salute, she left them. Fucking love this woman. Um, <laughs> Lark and Sandry start setting up their loom situation. It's like a back backpack loom. I I I don't quite understand. I kind of imagine it, it like um like one of those front carriers for babies. Uh, yeah, um, but like it's it's out in front of you, and so yeah. you can like lean it. Uh, you know, I I'm certain. I feel fairly certain that we watched a a, a homeschool yes. child use one. I am probably. so certain we at have. that alpaca farm probably where they <laughs> probably. had like ten children. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But they're setting up their loom situation when Yaren arrives. He immediately tells Sandry that weaving is too low-brow for her. Uh, he then notices that Triss and Briar are making burn salve, and he has a tantrum about how they won't need it because he won't let there be a forest fire, and he stomps off like a child. The fire in the forge calls out to Daja for her to make it into something new. As, you know... <laughs> as fire is off to do. So she weaves it like it wants to be shaped. When she's done with it, it is too hot for even her to hold, so she puts it down in the fire, but accidentally puts the fire out, completely cutting off its air. Nico arrives with Yarin, and he's curious about the weaving. Yarin has another fit because of her doing big magic, I guess, without rules, because rules are very important for magic, of course. Nico guides him away from the children to tell him the true facts of the matter in regards to the children's recent adventures. And then Lark is cross, and it's so funny because <laughs> she literally, it's so funny. Lark was cross for once of the few times that her charges could remember. Ignore him, she told them firmly once Nico had led him away. He thinks the whole world should be ordered as he expects it to be. Thank heavens Nico got away from the university before they made him into something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, oh, that's just, she's cross. <laughs> So good. Anyway. Um, okay. Chapter five. Okay. I just want to note that Sandra is charming the shit out of everyone. Like literally the entire book. So the soldier whose coat she burned assures her uh, that it's better this way because he's marked by her. And another soldier asks if she could do the same to his uh, once she figures out how she did it. Um, and so then this chapter starts with a member of Enola's staff bringing a uh, them rations and uh they're not great rations um and uh he notes sandry could eat better if she dined with the nobles and she's just like nah i'm good the lady asks you tell her you couldn't find me <laughs> and the, the the servant is just like oh you <laughs> it's, it's so cute i love it anyway the children and lark uh reflect on the st state of goldridge uh Lark noting it is not the only place in need of the Duke's aid. The Valley had pledged their saffron crop the year before, but we've seen what happened here, happened there, and the mines are at this point all dried up. So this land has little to offer for the return in return for its safety. Oh my God, I can't read my own sentence. Um, Valid. Briar and Daja try to figure out how Triss can end the drought or at least get water to the area, but Triss says there's no moisture anywhere. She says she feels scraped thin, and I totally get that. <sighs> when it's that dry, man, it's horrible. Like, I feel it. I know exactly what she's talking about. Fire conditions yep. are horrible, man. They mm. really are. Oh, there we go. Lark says uh, they can't fix everything, and Sandra's like, then I don't want to be a mage. I want to help people. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> well if i can't do everything then what's the point <laughs> exactly what's the point really um later in the day briar realizes that something he ate isn't agreeing with him for the first time in his four months of being a house cat since he used to eat stuff that had turned all the time when he was a street cat um because he's all over <laughs> yeah um 
Briar finds Daja kneeling on the ground. She tells him that she was also heading to the privy when she felt a warm spot. Before they can figure it out, hot water begins shooting up from the ground. They run off for fear of getting in trouble, but they can't figure out how Daja did it. She notes she has nothing to do with water, and Briar reminds her that Sandry has made fire and him lightning, so maybe she should keep an open mind or some shit. Um, worried she damaged a pipe, Daja and Briar decide to see if they can fix it. You know, expressly forbidden magic by Uncle Nico. No problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the pair send their magic into the ground. Uh, I love all the magic travel in this one because it's, it's so good. Yeah. Like they get, they just send themselves underground several times, and it's mm, delightful. Um, the two split up, and Daja finds herself drawn to a specific pool of water. As she investigates, she finds herself nearly swallowed by the lava uh, that was heating it. <laughs> um, uh, the metal and earth seem to want to keep her, and I love that. Uh, she panics and struggles before she is suddenly saved by a bright square of fire that she created earlier. It just, she called it to her. Just last ditch effort. This kid, man. Um, Dasha finds an escape route and just shoots out it. Uh, she finds her magical self up high with pine trees and cold, crisp air hovering above a large and creaking mass of ice. Uh, she is miles away from her body and can't see, can't even see the Gold Ridge Castle from here. Briar catches up and is in awe of the living ice. Daja doesn't like it because she's metal and it slows her down. Like, she, she literally says, you know, I feel sluggish. <laughs> it's like, oh. Um, anyway, Daja and Briar reach out to Triss to ask her to fix the geyser trysts accidentally into creation and they return to clean up their physical beings chapter six dodge and briar return from their adventure to polyam with everything necessary for a true trader bargaining session Polyam offers Daja a gift of a copper dish for her bargaining token and Daja can see that everything being used in the ceremony is obviously obviously from polyam's own things not the bargaining goods from the caravan so it's all slightly tabby <laughs> Daja becomes emotional when given real trader tea and foods, things she hasn't had since her last night above uh, her last night aboard her family's ship. <laughs> it's so sad. I'm yeah. sorry. Guys, w we don't go into the details of things, but this is one of those read the books, please, because yeah. uh, the memories she's just flooded with and, and the way that uh, the the scents and the, the sounds and the yeah. sights make her feel. It's just, ugh. Yeah. Heartbreaking. Yeah. I hate it. Polyam notices that they have a hungry audience, so she shares with all of the children and Lark. Uh, she learns about their pasts and is slowly letting go of her original feelings towards the children. She's finding sympathy almost. She softens. I honestly, I like, I like her a lot and I like how her character goes. So she's like, she's being confronted with all of these like things that she took for granted when she met them, if that makes sense. So yeah. like she took them all at face value. And as she's listening to them, you know, she's talking about how it's not, you know, it's not right having all of these cacks no traitor things. <laughs> and Daja being like, they're not cacks. They're my sati, which means like <laughs> non traitor people who are like your beloved, basically. And then Polyam's like, well, you know, all of, well, I'll, I, I think I, I talk about it. <laughs> um, Daja describes what she and Briar saw on their adventure. Uh, and somehow Lark is okay with this. She doesn't question. Uh, and Lark and Polyam tell, it, tell them it was a glacier, which excites Triss because she's read about them before and has never gotten to see one. And that's part of her magic. So she's like, we're fucking going. Um, <laughs> I have to be here with all this awfulness making me feel terrible. <laughs> yeah. Polyam says she'll include trader tea with the bargain on the down low, which surprises Daja as it is forbidden to give to the tea to outsiders. It is a very meaningful gesture for Daja. They set to their bargain, but look over and see that the metal vine has devoured the copper plate, causing it to grow a little copper bud. Polyam says she'll offer even more money for it, uh, and she'll bring another token to bargain. Uh, 
After the trader leaves, Lark sits the children down and asks for their bobbins, the silk thread. Uh... Uh, and also their magic. Uh, <laughs> Sandra needs both to be able to map out their powers through weaving. Uh, mm. Lark gives them all fresh bobbins of silk to keep on them, which will be used for later to fix the map. <laughs> they all meditate and hand their magic to Sandry for the weaving. When, and then they go back to their little tasks. To their little tasks. It's really cute. Anyway. Uh- <laughs> Chapter 7. At dinner, Sandry is even more alone without her connection to her siblings at the other end of the hall. Like, I think she suffers the most from this. <laughs> it's awful. Um, luckily, Nico sees and starts talking to her. They're talking about how Triss is developing a cough due to the smoke, because, ugh, this feels like October in San Diego. Um, and, uh... Then they listen to Yaren spout bullshit. Uh, Sandry hopes her uncle isn't listening to Yaren, and it's like, come on, Sandry. Vedras has better sense than that. It's part of why you're here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Frostpine gets in late when everyone is winding down for the evening, and Sandry is working on it, on her loom. I thought it said room for a second. <laughs> is working on her loom. Uh, the children fill him in on what went down, and with Polyam and Dasha reveals she's going to let the caravan think Polyam haggled her down ridiculously low to score her trader points. That's just how I'm going to refer to it from here on out. Trader points. Um, Sunken. <laughs> trader points. Same thing. Uh, uh, Frostpine also finds out that the children, but specifically his Dasha, uh, have given their power over temporarily. He freaks out in a not frostpiney way and storms out. Um, everybody's like, this is what needs to happen. We, we discussed this. <laughs> um, Tris announces she wants to go see the glacier the next, the next day. Uh, like, like just very abruptly. I want to go see this. <laughs> it's just like, okay, Hermione. Um, <laughs> uh, just in time. Where is it? There we go. Just in time for, uh, Polyam, where did it go? Uh, okay. Triss announces she wants to go see the glacier the next day, just in time for Polyam to show up and offer to be their guide. Nico accepts and proclaims a field trip day with him and Lark accompanying them. Uh, Sandry has to work on her weaving of the ch- children's magic, so she excuses herself both from present company and the field trip tomorrow. Polyam has come to present a new trade offering, a beautiful jade carving of a snow leopard. Um, side note, I love that Briar gets excited and handles it, partly because it's something he could only dream of, um, you know, holding, uh, legitimately. (laughs) Um, but also that he is cradling something that he is then told is a shy cat from Yanjing. And it's made of stone. Exactly. Oh! Everyone's like, who hasn't read ahead? No No idea what this is. No fucking clue. Don't worry, guys. (laughs) You'll find out because it's another one of my favorite books in the entire canon. Yeah. Um, There we go. Dasha asks if uh, this also came from Polyam's belongings, and she tells her that it came from the caravan's goods. That said, the leaders of the caravan are sending their goods, but not presenting it themselves. Polyam explains they just don't want to... Kunsuen and themselves uh when she's already in the paint there we go yeah sorry my my vision skipped back up um <laughs> that dyslexia am i right <laughs> am i right uh she <laughs> offers to bring a meal for their trip tomorrow and heads out and um i think it's lark who says that she's enjoying this too much <laughs> and she's like oh She's abusing this. I like it. I like this lady. (laughs) Um, Rosethorn uh, takes care of her baby bird, Triss. uh, She's like, come on. I don't like the sound of that cough. We're going to give you something for it. Please, I don't want it to be disgusting. She does not promise anything. Um, uh, Briar starts hanging out with Little Bear. Oh, by the way, Little Bear and Shriek are all over this book, but they're set dressing, so we haven't mentioned them. Uh, Daja decides uh, to check on her teacher. 
Frostpine, with no probing, uh, decides to tell his student about his life. Frostpine was born in a hot southern country called Mbao. Despite his father being a shepherd, he remembers growing up in comfort with plenty of everything. He was moody and sullen and kept busy at the smith's shop. Then, when he was 15, the local shaman died. It turned out the shaman had been siphoning Frostpine's powers since he had been born, and he was paying his parents for it. Suddenly, all of the magic came to him and he nearly died, claiming his veins felt like they were on fire. Then, going to the blacksmith, he heard the metal sing and accidentally melted some of the tools, so the smith threw him out. Which, fuck that guy. Um, his family sold him and acted like they did it for his own good. So, he is protective of people's magic. And I said, read bottom of page 129. So Daja says, no wonder you were upset. He sighed. Lark is right. You four need this. The memories were just too much. It'll be over soon, I think, Daja reassured him. When I get my magic back, I promise I'll never give it up like that again. Frostpine came over and kissed her forehead. That's all I needed to hear, he said. I, I love, I love them so much. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Chapter eight. <laughs> Dasha and Pollyann lead the way to the glacier. Triss sees the state of the lake and laments that she can't help them by bringing rain since there's nothing around for her to move along. When they stop for midday, Daja puts her copper rose, what came from the vine after eating the copper plate, into the ground in the middle of their picnic. We learn that Pollyam used to be the best mount handler in the caravan. Almost two years ago, she was trying to get the horses across a rock slide when she slipped and slid down the mountain, uh, down all of her left side, causing her scars. As in, it literally, like, it says... It carved my leg to the bone, took my eye. My whole left side looks just like my face. So that sucks. Um, and then Daja says, I'm sorry. You're sorry for me. Pollyanne's smile was twisted. At least I'm still Saha. Which, by the way, the traitor word for themselves <laughs> is Saha. Um, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> is it? Is being a Wirik that much better than being Trongshi? Polyam stared at her as if she'd run mad. What a silly question. Of course it is. Of course. She ran her fingers over the cap on her staff, as if memorizing the engravings and inlays that told her story. I'll pray, Koma and Oti, every day that you find a way to lay up so much Zokin that your name will be taken from the Trongshi logs and you'll be able to return to your people again. Like, this woman is starting to really care about Daja. Yeah. Polly M's apparently 25, so she is, she's also a young woman. Uh, yeah. But I think that's very interesting, The like, the idea of, well, at least I'm better than you, which I hear that mm -hmm. from. Uh, I hear, I get that a lot in, like, conversations in, with other disabled people. Mm -hmm. um, hearing them be like, well, at <laughs> least I'm not this and this and this. And it's always like, wow. You have a really weird sense of value of people. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. Triss and crew come to find Daja about the hot springs she and Briar found. Triss explains that they might be able to bring some of the warmth from the hot springs through to melt some of the glacier to fill up the reservoirs. Nico says that they have to be careful since they don't, uh, so that they don't cause a volcano. It's okay. We have melting stones for that science lesson. <laughs> when they return to their picnic, they see that Daja's copper rose has gotten bigger. This means that they have found a fresh vein of copper. Nico hides it by creating an illusion of a tree. But Briar is a little shit. <laughs> um, um, hush, Nico ordered without opening his eyes. Pressing his hands together, he bowed his head. White fire streamed across the space between him and the copper plant. Sinking into the ground, it wrapped around the metal, forming a cylinder that built until it was nearly five feet tall. Branches thrust out from it and sprouted twigs and leaves. The white fire grew dim, replaced by brown or green color. At last, Nico dropped his hands and opened his eyes. His perfect tree illusion solidified and settled. Very nice, said Briar with approval. Couldn't have done better myself. Couldn't have done it all yourself, muttered Triss. Briar <laughs> ignored her. But you'd never find a cork oak in these parts. Too cold. <laughs> Nico looked down his nose. I beg your pardon? <laughs> Briar shrugged. Just thought I'd mention it. Nico glared. The tree shape rippled and became a long-needled pine sapling. All right? 
<laughs> if we're done picking at nits, I'd like to return to Gold Ridge. Exclamation point. <laughs> that child got under his skin. I love that. As they ride down the mountain, they see an orchard on fire. Uh, Yarin appears to put it out, but then he also has a little fit, so everyone rides away feeling very uncomfortable. He's like, see, you guys couldn't have done that. They need me. And he's like, methed out. Like, yeah, this entire book. Um, I know that's in one of your chapters. I don't know if it's mm-hmm. happened yet. No, uh, it hasn't yet. But it's just like, <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ, this man... Someone should stop him. No, no, but- you're, you're trying to, to see, you want to see me fail. You just want to see me fail. I know it. It's like, oh, okay. I have my uses, don't I? He cried, his voice harsh. At least I'm important for half the year. They wouldn't give me a teaching position at Lightsbridge, no. But here, no one could manage without me. Okay. <laughs> There's something about uh, Daja books and um, oh yeah, men, men feeling weird... underappreciated. Yeah, <laughs> weird firemen. Yeah, <laughs> yikers. Um. <laughs> uh, so chapter nine. Lark and the children return to their room, and Sandra pulls out the woven map. Lark sprinkles a mixture on the weaving to be able to see the individual magics. The other three children can't see it, but every single one of them. Lark included, feel it, and Lark has to run off to be sick. Uh, now that it's been mapped, Lark says that Sandry will force the threads to separate and then fix them to the one that they came from. So, you know, what one do you magic mean can... they can't see it. The children can't see it. They can see the they can see the magic on there. No, they it can... specifically says they can't. But it they did. They say they can see all the threads going together and No. No, yes. they don't. They, do. they don't see it, and even uh, and they can't see it because uh, Triss gets a blinding headache, and 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 fucking. It was impossible to see what Lark and Sandry did, but they felt it. Yeah, she could also see clearly what had become of their magic. After, I'm talking. I was talking about what they were doing at that time. It doesn't matter. <sighs> okay. Um, the point was it affected them physically. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, Sandry, um, is told to, you know, just separate their magics out so that they're each just got their own. Uh, the children are worried that they'll lose mad, what makes their magic so interesting and their mind speaking. Um, but Lark tells them they really need to separate the powers. Sandry has an alternative. Instead of completely separating them, she can make them side by side with space in between that way they can reach into one another's wells but uh they can make sure they don't accidentally spill over she Um, uses a border she's bordering them she yeah and it's like yeah if i did that and um but i i I just really like the description of the um, she could clearly see what had become of their magic For an inch or so, her stripes were clear and even, as straight as if drawn with a ruler past that one inch mark, fine hair fibers strayed, first across the borders between stripes, then further. By the point she had, she had four or five inches of cloth, the colors were hopelessly scrambled as green, orange, white, and blue formed a satiny layer over the warp threads. I just, I like that description of, like, how physically you would be able to see their magic. Okay. Um, Sorry. But, but <laughs> Sandry says that she'll separate them. Um, yeah. um, and L- Lark says, uh, you'll be able to grip your powers individually. Um, wait, where is it? Uh, they, they won't stray from your control. She looked at the weaving and sighed. I certainly can't be sure that we'd succeed in pulling your magics apart or that they would stay separate, not without the border you suggested. And why didn't I think of that? A border for each stripe? She asked her student, her eyes dancing. Some master I am. You would have thought of it, Sandra protested. Maybe I'm interwoven with you, she grinned (laughs) impishly at Lark. (laughs) I think Lark is the most well-adjusted of all of the teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. She's just got, like, you know, she's seen the world. She knows how it works. She's, you know, doing her thing. 
<laughs> um, Daja find or the children are sent back out with the with their. No. Yes. Yes, they are sent back out with the with the, an, another set of bobbins. Yes. They, they, there's there's a lot of rotating bobbins. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's generally what bobbins do. They rotate when you're putting the string on them. I hate you. <laughs> Wow. So uh, rude. <laughs> Daja finds herself missing the sea. At least back home she could go to the wall and breathe in the ocean air. She's advised to look out to try the lookout tower. It is very high and she's able to see everything from up there. Unfortunately, she's not alone. <laughs> Yaren's up there watching vigilantly for fires. Um Daja notices he's drinking something and he explains that it's a tea filled with stimulants to give him the energy to keep up with the fires. She asks him why he hates uh, Nico so much, and sorry, and uh, Yarin monologues with about how lucky Daja and her siblings are to be so gifted. He goes on about how gifted mages don't know the value of hard work, and they never will understand how much harder he has to work to be anywhere near as good as them, all while sipping his amphetamine tea. I mean, like, it's probably not specifically paralleled but it feels equivalent all things yeah. considered he's just like a trucker doing meth to be able to yeah get you know get it done in time that's what he's that's what that's the, the vibe if you guys are wondering that's the vibe <laughs> if you don't understand that vibe i don't know how to convey it to you any clearer uh, yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh so, uh, meanwhile, uh, Sandry weaves her friend's magic. Start at page 161. Okay. I, I'm just, I, I'm not reading all of it. I'm just t- taking little bits from each uh, section. Um, here was Briar's new thread, wound onto his own shuttle, not twined with the others as the first threads had been. It was anchored on its satiny mess on the left side of the cloth, in the area that had started out at, as his. Taking up the shuttle, Sandry concentrated on him. These days, he smelled wonderfully of damp earth and herbs, of aloe, pine trees, and a tumble of flowers. Here, a loop of silk caught his quick hands as he slipped a roll in his, into his favorite, into his shirt front. Sorry, I don't know where he got favorite from. Or balanced a knife on a fingertip. A shift of the light, and he, she had his pale gray-green gray, eyes under thin black brows. A ghostly hand tugged one of her braids, his favorite trick when she wasn't looking. He re- she reached the end of his stripe. So fucking cute. Um, I know. And then she puts the border there. Uh, Triss was easy to call to mind. This strand was coarse. Red, it was coarse red hair. Its curls scissored off, banished until Triss no longer grew lightning bolts in it when she lost her temper. Here was the smell of old books and a hint of wood polish. Triss liked housework. Here were storm gray eyes gentle, gentling as Triss combed Little Bear's coat when she thought no one else knew, knew how much she loved their ungainly dog. Um, and then she has herself, and it's an unfortunate nightmare, but she also remembers that she made the, 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 the glowing thing anyway. Yeah. And that Nico had called her a treasure. Um, <laughs> Dodge's thread was... <laughs> ah, Dodge's thread. That was simple weaving. After all their dealings uh, with Polyam, Do- Dodge was the sea. She was a fire in the forge and a plain capped staff. She was Sandry's first friend at Winding Circle, and she was hot and c- metal and crimson. She-, she was hot, metal, and crimson, the traitor color for mourning. Sandry gave Dodge and the edge of the cloth a white border. And then she was just done. And, and, and then she comes to. So we've got this beautiful daydream just laid out in front of us because the writing in this is phenomenal. And it's just the... Oh, so good. Um, so she comes to, and uh, she's like, damn, I'm hungry. And, and luckily, uh, Uncle Duke Vedris is there. And um, <laughs> he's like... Uncle the Duke. He's like, I'll, I'll bet you're hungry, huh? <laughs> you missed dinner. <laughs> Did you know you were glowing? <laughs> um, so, you know, it's... This is this is the required uh, Duke Vedris being a good papa scene and uh, her being a wise noble and him just being generally proud of her existence. Um, 
uh, she they note that they're lucky to have found the copper mine because otherwise Gold Ridge may have never recovered. The teachers gather around as their students place their hands on the cloth and regain their magic. Too tired to test it out, everyone goes to bed. Yeah. Chapter 10. <laughs> Dasha goes over the vine before the traders come for it and finds that it has reached the limit of its growth. Briar tells her that it needs a pot. Rosethorn gives her money for the pot, which is so cute, <laughs> uh, and tells her exactly what to get. It's so funny, though, because... Rose Thorn is like, here's the money for it, uh, but you know, it's not like I, I care or anything. <laughs> Rose Thorn is so soon that it, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, Triss realizes that the vine looks like a cyclone. So earlier, Daja, when she was examining it, she was trying to, like, she was like, okay, well, it's metal. That's like me. It's like a vine. That's like Briar's magic. It kind of looks like almost yarn because of how it's spun. And now, and she's like, but I can't see what Triss is in it. And now Triss is like, whoa, it looks like a cyclone. Mm -hmm. You know, and so now we see where that is. Yeah. Rose Thorn instructs Daja on what to do with the pot and her iron scraps from the nails that got ruined from Triss's outburst. So she, like, <laughs> put, layers it in with, like, clay and, and nails and stuff like that to have it be, like, a proper, like, pot. I think it's so cute. The entire yeah. The entire thing is cute. Nico asks Daja and Briar to show him, in magical form, where the hot springs come out so he and Triss can get to work on it. Daja gets jealous that Triss can go into the lava and she can't without melting. And it's really cute. <laughs> like, uh, it's like, uh, you're this... metal, Daja. You would melt. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this bit where <laughs> he wanted to find Rosethorn and tell her that tiny plants grew in the ice. He didn't want to sit here listening to Nico fuss. <laughs> I love Briar. This Everything... is where my priorities lie. <laughs> For Briar, everything is literally like, his priorities are like Rose Thorn, the girls, food. That's like his priorities. Like, <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, so good. When they return to their bodies, it's noon and Polyam is already there to pick up the vine. After being paid, Daja wants to help Polyam take the vine to the caravan and to ride along behind it for a bit. She's grateful to have already had that excuse because Lady Anulia comes in, An Anula, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, comes in right after to invite everyone to lunch and is racist about Polyam. <laughs> <laughs> She's a real piece of shit. She so really clear. is. <laughs> um, I say Polyam is so good. You should keep this, Polly M said, pushing the inlaid box away from her. The caravan would only burn it, and it would be a waste of good work. Besides, there's a brick of traitor tea under the velvet. I had to smuggle it out. <laughs> Aww. It's so cute. I love them. Okay. Um, so good. But I know Ariana said it earlier about... Um, but this is a specific... Yeah, but this is where they specifically... Um, talk about uh how she'll take mm, no i can't find it so i'm not gonna care yeah but she just it's, it's a beautiful description of the flag snapping in the air reminding yeah. her of the sails oh and, no wait, and wait 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 no, no, the no, no, no. colors I, I found it i found okay. it okay <laughs> dasha and polyam arrive at the caravan and there's a lovely description of their culture when Daja and Polyam emerged from the band of forest just below the castle into the clearing above the main road, the girl could see that 10th Caravan Idaram was ready to go. Everyone was packed and loaded. Families were eating a cold midday meal. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh, Daja halted under the trees, fighting to swallow the lump that had appeared in her throat. The means of travel was so different, but some things were the same, white or blue traders. Um, they fixed vivid blue pom-poms and strings of bells to their gear to scare away demons. The babies wore blue strings on their wrists, at wrists, and every child under the age of two wore tiny golden bell earrings. Most of the girls wore an ankle bracelet of tiny bells, the boys' azure blue wristbands. The men and most of the children wore leggings and thigh-high tunics. Many uh, women and older girls wore flaring skirts, blah, 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 blah. Until her family's ship sank, Daja had spent her entire life among people who had dressed and decorated things in just this way. It's so... It's, like, heartbreaking. Um, 
And it's also such, such a baby. vivid <laughs> depiction of these people and their culture. And we learn so much just from this, like, like you can see them and hear them because there's jingling and stuff mm-hmm. like that. It's so fantastic. I have a lot of, like, warm and dynamic camera shots for for this this whole fucking scene. Just, yeah. It's so good. And then um, just them dri- driving into the... Yeah. And uh, Daja and Polyam get into the wagon uh, because Daja's like, I'll just go with you guys for a little while, too. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my favorite thing, though, is all there are... Um, she looked at her uh, one corner of her broad mouth twisted, making face. Have you nothing better to gawk at? She demanded loudly. Haven't you seen a trong she before? <laughs> Daja peeked at the other traders. They'd suddenly found things to do that gave them an excuse to turn their backs on her and Polyam. <laughs> um, but they had gotten the wagon, and for a brief, brief moment at least, Daja Kasuba was a traitor again. Mm. And I'm just, that's, like, I... Yeah. I cry at everything. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> but, like, it just, it really just hits, you know? Chapter 11. Uh, Anula's Dil... I'm going to try that one again. Anulia. Uh, I was right. There's an I. There's, there's a second I. Anulia. There is? Yeah. How did I manage to not see it ever? <laughs> uh, maybe my version is maybe, different. Maybe I'm blind. My copy has a Trader Talk glossary, but we still haven't got, we don't have any other glossary yet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Glossary. Um, anyway. Um, so Anulia's dinner uh, is held in the watchtower where Daja spoke with Yaren. Uh, Anula, Anulia's she announces that every fire in the valley that has... That bitch announces. That their bitch announces that uh, every fire fire in the valley has been extinguished. Rosethorn questions that, and Yarn gets all twitchy. As the adults try to subdue him, uh, by which I mean this is where he's really freaking out, and he's... Because he's, Rosethorn's like, I mean... How, how do you know? And, and he's like, oh, I would feel it. And Nico's like, um, would you, though? Because we can all tell you're tired. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> and he claims that, that that they want to see him fail. And um, just as uh, everyone is uh, distracted, um, Triss is, looks out at the valley and begins to panic because little fires have popped up everywhere. Um, I'm sorry. Let me just read what I... Okay. Triss looks out at the valley and begins to panic. Little fires are starting to pop up. At first, Yaron tries to say there can't be because he would have sensed them. Nico states how obvious it is that Yaron is exhausted, and Triss immediately offers to lend her power to him. He freaks out and claims everyone wants to see him fail. The scene is so painful. Uh, he puts out one fire with a lot of effort, then another pops up, and another, and another, and Yaron tries to control them, but burns himself out and dies. Just dies. Yep. <sighs> Kentucky Fried Yarn. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, uh, Lady Anulia, uncharacteristically, gets into motion to evacuate her people and protect them. Uh, the others stare at the fire, and the children have the dawning realization that Daja is in the forest. Daja is lost in enjoyment at being surrounded by traitor people when Sandry and Triss psych- psychically connect. Uh, they just kind of plug in. Um, Daja, or wait, there we go. They tell her that uh, what they've seen and to get the caravan out of here. Daja warns the train that the fire has jumped the road and they're in danger. And the Gilov uh, hesitates and, and just gets mad about Daja be- polluting them with her trong she luck. But Polly M finally stands up and pleads for everyone to just listen to the girl. She re- really reveals rather, <laughs> she reveals the Gilov who has treated her so horribly is her mother. So uh, 
it's just it's it's like she's the exact same position that Daja could have been because Daja's mother was also the Gilov. Yep. It's uh, it, it, it suddenly a lot of things click into place. It's like anyway. Um while the caravan attempts to turn around, Daja uh, checks the flames and finds that they don't have much time. She needs to do something to contain the flames and asks for help. Triss, Sandra, and Frostpine, she's just like, oh god, Frostpine's here, thank god, I'm okay. <laughs> My daddy's here, I'm fine. Um, together they realize that they need to make more of those fire blankets Daja has been making, using the fire to douse the fire. <laughs> Uh, they smother those flames, but da Daja notices that the caravan isn't moving. Polyam tells her that the fire has surrounded them and there is no way out. Yeah. So. Spooky. Rose Thorn paces because she feels useless. She decides to go be foolish by trying to protect some of the trees from the blaze and refuses to let Briar come along. <sighs> <laughs> He says, uh, let me, use me for a shield, please, Rose Thorn. That made her stop. No, she said flatly. I'm going to say so to the trees and I forbid you to help. No, he yelled, grabbing fistfuls of her habit. I won't let you. It felt as if he'd hugged a sapling that suddenly turned into a tree wider than the tower on which they stood. Briar was thrown back into the kiosk that sheltered the stair. The breath slammed from his lungs. He slid to the floor. The giant tree that was also Rose Thorn shone so brightly he could not bear to look at her. My lad, do as you're told, she murmured. Then that overwhelming power, Rose Thorn's hidden until now, drew back into to his intense relief. <laughs> Did you see that elephant, he asked, pushing the bottle away from... Uh, <laughs> when he had enough. I want to complain to the magistrate. Someone let an elephant run wild and it stepped on me. <laughs> that was just Rose Thorn being noble, said Lark grimly. I'll make her use my strength. I'm not bound to green magic, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's just... It's so, so I want to complain to the magistrate. <laughs> I need to talk to your manager. There is an elephant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, then they all... Uh, they're all like... Lark stepped in beside Rosethorn and slung an arm around the shorter woman. Here, love, she said kindly. Let me help you with that. This time, at least Briar knew to shade his eyes against the blaze. Uh, mm -hmm. Jealousy rose in his throat, thick as bile. Rosethorn would take help from Lark. <laughs> Baby! Buddy! She's a grown-up. Her powers are more developed yeah. and, and stable. And, and also... Like she said, she doesn't have the same magic. Yeah. So they, when she gathered up all the fire scarves, uh, and she, Daja, like, used one of them to weave, just as a recap. Uh, and then when that, when she plopped that down, it spread fire, put stuff out, but spread other stuff with the, with the breeze. And she's like, well, I can't do that anymore. So she just has these two long Real fire Nancy scarves. Drew moment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she has these just two gigantic fire scarves that she just can't let go of. Otherwise, they'll go everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, Sandry and Frostpine offer to take one each, and Daja hands them over. This was not a good idea, but that's okay. <laughs> Daja has a moment of bitterness about how the traders would rather she was dead, and Polyam says out loud what Daja has been feeling. She says she wouldn't blame her if she just left them to die, and notes the cruelty of Saha ways when you're the one on the wrong side of them. But Daja looks at the caravan and sees her own family on the third ship, Kasubo. She wasn't able to save them, but she can save 10th Caravan Iteram. She takes her staff and approaches the fire. Daja gathers all of the fire up into one column, the rest of the fire, not the fire scarves. Um, <laughs> and she almost loses hold of it. She chases it and puts herself in the column's heart. Triss grabs onto the girl magically to keep her from dying, with Briar and Nico's magic helping. Briar tries to tell her to put a root into the ground, but Dodge's strength is waning, and she feels like she's melting, so she's just like, eh, you know. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I, I, leave me alone. It's too much. It's so... <laughs> Where's your root? You forgot to make a root. <laughs> Why? Dodger wondered numbly. She was starting to melt. What had roots to do with with anything? I don't want to. <laughs> Just like a traitor, said Briar scornfully. Always running when things get rough. 
Plague comes to town. That was Triss. A Triss shrill as a, shrill as a, dr- a J. Traitors are the first to leave. I lived with them. I know. Sandry's whisper was faint as if she were dying. I can't depend on the Saha. Not ever. Daja forced herself to her knees, pushing against the fire's lift. Her knees just barely... Uh, Stop it, she told her friends. You only want me angry enough to try putting down a root. You could have just asked. (laughs) Oh, I love her. Uh, Daja thrusts the whole of the forest fire into the earth, and Triss and Nico help guide it to the glacier. She returns to her body and takes the fire scarves from Sandrine and Frostpang, who are basically on the verge of death at this point, no big deal. Uh, And she stuffs all of that into the earth as well. She is finally out of fire and realizes that her clothes and her staff have turned to ash. The brass cap of her staff has melted and coats her palm. Daja turns around to check on the caravan, and they are all on the ground in a deep bow to her. Gilav Chandrisa, the obvious... We didn't name her We never said her name, and yeah, I... I... But the Gilav approaches her and tells her what she's done has been enough to wipe her name from the record of the Trangshi, and she is now a traitor again, with her home being 10th Caravan Iterum. Oh, but we're not done. Chapter 13. Uh... (laughs) Uh, some lives were lost in the fire, but fewer than would have been had they not saved the caravan. Uh, the burn salve they've been making comes in handy, and everyone works to get things going again. They open the copper mines as soon as it's safe, and everyone sets out to repair. Uh, sets about repairing and regrouping. The brass on Dodge's hands start to come off in chips, which she collects in a bowl, where the brass magically reabsorbs itself. So she's it's not even looking... chips. She's like peeling it off like it's like like it's a scab. She describes it as a, as a metal scab, basically. <laughs> it's such a disgusting but description of it. <laughs> it, it, it feels and 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 kind of looks just like her skin, and she's just like, "Huh, that's interesting." Um, but it's really interesting that it like that. That's pretty cool, right? Uh, after a few days, the Gilov and Mimandra of the caravan show up to speak with Daja. They hand her a new trader staff, but it is not a Trangshi staff. Hold on. Hold on, 222. It was crowned with a many-pointed star of inlaid brass wire, the signia of 10th Caravan Idurum. Two flames and a sailing ship half sunk in the waves had been etched into the sides. And I love that description so good. It's so good. It's so good. Um, Because that's what she deserves. A real staff, not a fucking trong she one. Um... But yeah, so they're like, yeah, you, you'll need this if you're one of us. So, um, you know, be sure to have that when we come to pick you up. Um, <laughs> uh, but um, but anyway, she, you know, thinks about it. And joining the caravan means that they would, you know, want to train her like a proper mem- memander. And uh, that would not only mean leaving her home and family, but also never picking up a tool or working with metal ever again. Uh and that's, that's too much for her. Um, after a month, the caravan gets ready to leave and take Daja with them. The, she thanks them for the offer, but th- says that clearing her name of being Trangshi pays off her, their life debt to her in full. She tries to return the staff as she would not be a member of their clan, sorry. But the Gilov tells her to keep it as, as a sign of her friendship with the caravan. It's so good. Uh, Daja has her own debt to repay. She announces... uh, uh, Daja has her own debt to repay, she announces. (laughs) I knew when I wrote it that that would be a troublesome thing for me to say, but I still still left it there. Uh, She tells Polyam that she... Had she not helped her and spoken for her, Daja would have been Trongshi for the rest of her life. For that, she presents her with a replacement for her old peg leg. It was a metal leg shaped entirely of thin iron rods and joints. Everything was covered in gleaming brass skin. Briar tickled the metal toe. It twitched just as any living foot might twitch. Triss laid a hand on the shin and the knee bent. Polyam stretched out a hand that shook violently and touched the leg. She yanked her fingers away, shocked. It's warm. It should act as a real limb would, Nico said. We tested it enough. And you have the rest of of today to try it out. It will shape to your flesh, explained Frostpine. It will, you'll be able to take it off whenever you like, Sandra put in. You can even bathe with it. 
added Briar, which I think it's cute that he brought up the bath part. Um, yeah. It was Triss who asked the question on everyone's mind. Do you want to try it on? Um, let's see. She she gets up on the table and she's just she's so thrilled and it it they trade it out and the stump uh, basically immediately latches to the leg and she needs only basically try to walk as she would have with a leg in order to make it move and it's dasha it's, invents auto mail exactly i was like this is some auto mail ass shit um uh <gasps> they send her off with such care and show that she is as as welcome in dasha's family as dasha is welcome in hers uh Frostpine tells her that they will they will be oh god sorry Frostpine tells her that they will be there uh, if she or, or, or her clan ever need them and I don't think I need to read this but let's just check this in here oh oh that was it um, Polly M wiped her face on her sleeve then t- turned to Daja this is more than payment no Daja interrupted. You gave me the chance to clear my name. Now we don't owe each other anything. Look at, looking at the carpet, she added softly, I would like to be friends. Rough arms swept her up in a hug. We are friends, Pollyam assured her in a fierce whisper. We will always be friends. And I love it so much. Uh, as the caravan leaves, Frostpine tells Daja her praises will be... St- will always be sung in the, their clan, even if she never makes another thing again. But he assures her she will be making nails soon. Time for the babbies to go on home. Indeed. <laughs> so, yeah, what? Who? Okay. First, favorite character of a new character, not including our other ones. I'm going to say Polyam. I mean... Yeah, but she's really the only fleshed out new character. That's very true. It's not like we're going to say Yarin's our favorite character. He's complex. He um, is. Uh, I, just, I find I him, him a fascinating <laughs> character. Yeah. He's a total asshole, but it's like he's a person. Like he's yeah. a very fleshed out person in that way. He is. Um... What was your favorite part? Oh. I I loved so many parts of this. I, I, I the fact that the children just flawlessly like fell into tasks they did together and and just uh, yeah. They're so good. This whole this whole book is full of good things and I love getting to know more about Frostpine and, and it's just, and, and seeing how each of the teachers continues to interact with their students. And it's just like, this is just a series that I love every scene. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think this book is just, it is <laughs> polished. It it's is. It's polished. Um, I honestly think my favorite part are all of the like descriptions of just like when the when you get one other baby with Daja. So like <laughs> Daja and Briar going at, through the the <laughs> tunnel like tunnels, but you know underground and stuff. Their the little pipes. adventure, <laughs> yeah. Or how Daja and Triss just are effortlessly like just helping eat like. Triss is just sitting there and being the bellows and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, I love that so much. It's just... Yeah. <sighs> Daja, in my opinion, is such, like, the most complex character out of these children. And they're all so fleshed out. Yeah. But Daja, to me, has so much going on with her that she just... She has these layers of cultures and, like, adding into, like, 
how she deals with her magic and the guilt she associates with her magic. And in this book, she then is actually able to overcome that guilt she feels of only being able to do this magic because her family is dead, right? She's Mm -hmm. now been welcomed back into the traders and she's able to make that choice herself to choose to do that magic. And I think that is... (sighs) I don't know if you see it, but there are some kitten paws coming under the door. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So, yeah, that's. um, Yeah. Yeah, that's how I feel about that's how I feel about that. uh, That book. Um, What book are we reading next month? Uh, next month, we have our, our final book in the, um, Circle of Magic Quartet, Briar's Book. I am going to warn everyone right now about (sighs) Briar's Book. So, there is an epidemic that happens in Briar's Book, and it is, I, I'm gonna tell you, the last time I reread this book was in late, uh, 2020, And it was, yeah, it was incredibly upsetting to read during uh, these COVID times. So please know and be aware that there is an epidemic and there are a lot of deaths and it's all, it, it, there's named character death as well. Just be aware. Yeah. (laughs) But it's also, in my opinion, my favorite book in this quartet. It is... So well written, and I am so excited to share that with everyone. Yeah. I, yeah, it's going to be good. It's yeah. going to be so good. It is. So, um, yeah, if you guys are wanting to support us instead, go over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Tamara Pierce and support her. Put any money you would ever want to give us and give it to her. So you yeah. would just give it to her anyway, you know? It's true. <laughs> So, as a reminder, I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And we hope you keep on reading. (laughs) Yeah!